Eternal Father and God of justice, you created us in your own image and likeness. But sin has warped the minds of men and throughout the world there is much injustice and much carelessness of the rights of other people and personal responsibility. Lord, when you are excluded from the hearts and consciousness of men, the inevitable result is that people suffer. And Lord, there is much injustice and corruption taking place in our world today, not only in the lives of individuals, but also in the corridors of power and the council rooms of many nations. So today, Lord, we pray, we come together as one, asking you to right all the wrongs that are taking place in our world and vindicate those that are being treated unjustly. Keep us, Father, from trying to take matters into our own hands. For vengeance is yours and you will repay. But Lord, in your grace and in your mercy, we pray that you would give justice and peace. That you would give justice and peace. That you would give justice and peace to all those that have been cruelly and unfairly treated by fellow policemen and alike. And may the injustice and carelessness that they have had to endure be the means to draw them into your saving arms of grace. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus and let everybody say amen. I have an assignment for you. What, like I said, what I'm about to say, you've never heard before, but you need to hear it because it's going to bless you. While I have been running, not this time, we have many out, uh, many white allies that have come. And I've, hear, and I've heard something that is continually said that we are coming to make sure that black people have space and that black people have a voice. That's the wrong message. I said, that's the wrong message because it's almost insulting. You can't give us space and a voice. We've been doing this for a very, very long time. We've got this together over here. My assignment to you is this. I need you to be as passionate as I have been organizing Seattle with our coalition in this state. I need you to be as passionate organizing yourselves, infiltrating your own people. there's a tendency that you feel that you have to reduce your white privilege. Did you hear what I said? That you have to produce, reduce your genius to accommodate us as a people. That's the wrong message. We need you to operate in your privilege, the power of your position. And when you operate in your own privilege, in your own genius, and then bring that to us as grassroots organization, I can guarantee you we will shift not only this state, but this country, faster than you will ever know. Stop diminishing your privilege to do what we're already doing. That is not how you operate to help change systems. It is your privilege, your genius, and your power that you have been given that you must bring to the table.
to help us shift things. After we leave here today, we cannot come and just talk about it. As the young people say, we have to be about it. This is what I'm asking. I'm asking for you all to respect the clergy and to respect these precious women and children, some even children are out here, that we do not put them in harm's way. Thank you for our organizer having us up here. He's right, we are ancestor legal on this. Most of us up here are actually in little muckle suits. We come here from this land though, from Zeke Teolic. Our people have lived here consistently for over 10,000 years. The language we speak, that buckles your oot seat, has been spoken here for over 10,000 years. And we know what it's like to fight this government. We've been doing it. And it's important that we came here today to stand with all of you. Because we know this. We know in Suquamish. We know in Talia. We know in Makoshir Kala. We know what that police violence against our people looks like. So we stand here today in our ancestral homelands because we know we are not alone and our ancestors are with us today. So we are not afraid. and deer that hunt lions and tigers. Don't be a rabbit or deer, let's be lions and tigers. Excuse me? What now? Yeah, let me just finish what I'm saying. All I'm saying is that the work has already been proven, and there are people that on purpose create distractions. So let me say this while I'm at it. We've seen even officers down in Minneapolis breaking out windows at AutoZone. We would hope that our officers would not do the same thing. But it's up to you to look out for that. It's up to all of us to look out for that. Anybody that is an outlier to the unity of what we've established here, what we will project upon this country, is an outlier. And we need to be on top of it. Everyone here is accountable for that. We have to be one family. Now I know people don't like me saying it sometimes, but if I didn't see the power of the Puyallup tribe, if I didn't see for myself the power of Latino organizations coming, if I didn't see for myself unions getting on board, if I didn't see it for myself, I wouldn't be completely confident that we can do this together. But because I've seen it, I am projecting to you, Seattle, in Washington State, that it is doable here and it is doable around this country. And as people are looking at us from around this country, let's show them what unity looks like. Let's show them when black and white and gay and straight can come together and build a movement that not only affects Washington, but the rest of this country. Seattle, let us lead. Let us lead.
This whole nation was built on racism. And this whole system is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. So why are we here? Let's quit asking for equality and take equality. Let's quit asking for justice and take justice. Why are we asking the slave master to give us justice and equality? Do you expect us to get equality from the same person that is putting a knee on our neck? You expect us to get justice from the same people that's putting a knee on our neck? So why are we still asking? We need to educate our own. We need to feed our own. We need to have our own economic system, political system, and social system. We can't do nothing with this system because it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And it's not broken. It's doing what it's made to do. So let's wake up and start understanding it's time for us to take what we want and quit asking for it. Because ain't nobody going to give us shit. Thank you. First off, I want to say, I'm doing this for Chance. I want to say that his lives matter. And I want to say, fuck the police that killed him. That's how I feel. Because that was my brother. For y'all that don't understand, that was my brother. I see this every day. I was going to get shot and killed by the police too. I got another story for you. This is real for us. For people who look like us, this is real for us. I'm tired of this bullshit that be going on. This cultural appropriation, this transracial shit. You guys want to be us until it's time to be us. I remember. I've been fighting the fight. That's my high school counselor right there. I remember Reggie was there. He was pulling me out of class because I was defending us. I've been doing this. I've been doing this since sixth grade, when nobody was there. Reggie was there. I remember they looked at me and they targeted me. I always spoke up for myself. I didn't understand the school system, but now I do. I understood they were trying to put me in a fucking box. Now I own four businesses. I got investments. I got shit going for me. I told my mama today, if I don't make it, then I got a $210,000 life insurance policy. Guess what? She can buy her a house. Even if I don't make it, she gonna buy her a house. I got a niece and nephew. They gonna be able to go to college. They gonna be able to start a business, whatever what the fuck they want to do. I'm tired of being professional about this. There ain't nothing professional about this shit. We dying, okay? I understand religion, I understand that, but we all gotta be here together. There's so many people in the church they outside, they inside, they're, in pray, they're praying in the house. They ain't out here with us. They ain't even voting. They ain't doing nothing to help us. But they supposedly supposed to be for God and Jesus and everything else, right? But Jesus is for us, all people. You should be out here with us. You shouldn't be in the house. You know, I understand, but there's people outside that aren't. But I appreciate every single one of y'all. I appreciate y'all. Come on now, I'm speaking for Shaw who just died he, with his daughter in his arms. I don't care what he did. He died with his daughter in his arms. Do you think they would have did that if it was a white man? No. No. Charlene Rose, come on now. And Tatiana Jefferson, come on now, say her name. Come on now. We got to be out here, it's more than just this. We got to be out here every single day and live this. I appreciate all the allies, but we got to understand who we are. Black lives matter. All lives matter too, but black lives matter. And stop trying to drown us out. Because we out here. Okay? It's good that we have the LGBT allies. But we need to keep them separate. Because we need our platform too. Everybody needs to be together. But we need our platform too. Stop trying to drown us out. Because I'm always going to be for black lives matter first. That's who I am. And there shouldn't be nothing wrong with that. That's all I gotta say.
police is hurting us. If somebody kick you, what you gonna do? We got a right to defend ourselves. Period. Any means. I got a daughter. I'll be damned if she grow up and get killed by a motherfucking police. I'll beat and kill your motherfucking ass. Period. Period. I done sacrificed my freedom before and I'll do it again for my motherfucking rights. Period. today for a lot of reasons. Black folks been dying of poverty, lack of access to health care, police brutality, the criminal punishment system for hundreds of years in this fucking country. I understand when I arrived here I was told don't let them people be a distraction, but I don't give a fuck about a car. SPD has $410 million a year to oppress us, to over-police us. They can buy a new car. We can't buy a new George Floyd. We can't buy a new Charlie and Elias. We can't buy a new Sean Fjord. We can't buy new human beings. I am tired of negotiating with politicians. us that if we just play their game, if we just follow the lawsuit that will win, I think everybody has the self-determination to move the way you need to to get your freedom. And that may make people uncomfortable, but the civil rights movement was only affected because people moved the way they needed to move. Whether we're talking about SNCC, whether we're talking about Malcolm X, whether we're talking about Martin Luther King or Sada Shakur or the Black Panthers, they moved the way they needed to move. We need a diversity of tactics. Everybody's movement is valuable. If there is no pressure, those folks who have partnerships with politicians can't move real policies forward. So when you condemn people for their actions, you end up condemning the pressure that created a movement that moved us forward. And they're about to kick me off this mic, but I'm okay with that. Because Black Lives Matter, I'm gonna move the way I need to move. Andre gonna move the way he need to move. But we do it with respect without throwing each other under the bus, without negotiating away other people's rights. We have to hold each other up. Care not cages, compassion not cages. When we take care of each other, we survive. When we take care of each other, we thrive. Defund the police. Imagine if $410 million a year went to black and native communities in our region. Communities that have never seen reparations for stolen land and stolen labor. I have to go before the city council 20 times before I get 100 k for the program I run. The police never got to go before the city council to get $410 million. Stop voting for these whack politicians. Stop expecting that establishment politics will serve us. Call that shit out. And those of you who are out here in this crowd, who know that you can change the world, step up because we got your back. We'll hold you up as we hold each other up. We need you. So don't condemn what those folks over there are doing because you feel like what you're doing is right. How we all move puts the pressure on the system to be forced to change. They can buy new cars. We cannot buy new people. Thank you. Everybody, crowd, I want you to understand that these families were on the forefront of getting the police accountability law in Washington State. The work that they did. Clap for these families in the fight. 
in their sacrifice to support other families, even though their family members were killed. That's the sacrifice we're talking about. Let's say their names. Say what's her name? Say what's her name? So we are standing here to represent everybody that's lost someone in their family. So we're gonna say their names, okay? Let's say their name. I said you. Javon! Joseph McGay! Javon! Joseph McGay! Okay, next family. Yosia Falatongo! Yosia Falatongo! Leonard Thomas. Leonard Thomas. Leonard Thomas. Seven years ago last week. No one talk a little bit about it. This is hard, people. I've got a 12 year old who's acting out because his biological clock knows what time it is. Well, you guys, I'm asking you to know something else about time. We thank you for being here today, but I'm asking you to be here next week. I'm asking you to answer the call next month when we start talking to the legislature in their special session. I want you here two years from now when we are still making changes. Don't make this march just about today. Hang with us. Listen to us. Answer our call and yell at the people who are going to make the change that they have to make the change. Talk about it. 